Coach, thank you. We are over 4,000 miles away from where you're seated in Orlando as we come to you from the European home of the NFL, London, England, and Wembley Stadium. Coming up, another edition of the NFL International Series, and it should be a good one between the Houston Texans, and he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And the Jacksonville Jaguars. They go with Leonard Fournette, third year back from LSU. It'll go as a loss of a yard on the game's first play. Second down. It's probably a pretty good sign here on the opening drive if your guys from the secondary are coming up and spilling things in the backfield. How about the adrenaline and aggressiveness that led his eyes to the backfield to run up there and make that tackle, setting a tone early for his defense. On second down, here's Fournette. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance and guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four down territory, that really opens things up for you. A pass there complete to Westbrook. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Now it's the former Texan. This is Alfred Blue. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. And that's a run that will energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 45-yard line. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. Got an open man, Keelan Cole. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, Got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. On second and a couple. Foles, his throw incomplete. Keelan Cole, the intended target, and it's third and short. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. They'll try and run for it with Fournette, and he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. If you make the stop there, maybe you hold them to three on this opening drive. They didn't get the stop. Yeah, new set of downs now. Now you're worried about, just as you pointed out, not just giving up three, possibly giving up six. Let's see what they decide to do here because they've got to change up what they have been doing. It hasn't been working. Now Foles. He's got his tight end, O'Shaughnessy. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. That one a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses because when you can have that type of a gain in the middle of the defense, it hurts them in so many ways because most teams like to be strong down the middle. And if you can sting them there, that opens things up for you on the outside as well. That's where he, their big tight end, is so good. That middle third, the seam routes, the in routes. Yeah, you're right. Probably see more of that. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage and fortitude to go in the middle as well. <laughs> and he's got it. That's already the third time they've looked his way on this opening drive. He's caught one of the three. But that doesn't mean they won't continue to go in that direction. It feels like they think they've got something good going there. And they think those numbers are going to increase. <laughs> They'll run on second down with Blue. This will be a five-yard pickup as they move it from the 20 to the 15. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. Yeah. 
It's been a pretty long opening drive. This will be play number 11 coming up on third down. Foles. He's got the hook up to Lee. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. His passing's been on point on this drive, hasn't it? Been very accurate, gotten the ball downfield, gained nice chunks of yardage. But now, in this situation, the field is really condensed, partner. So if he's going to throw the football, that would be pinpoint here. As I was going to ask you about that. Field shrinks, has to be sharper, but it's been a good opening drive so far. Now they just want to see if they can cap it off with the bell ringer and put it in the end zone. A loss of two there, second down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control go, go, of the line go. of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. Second and goal from the six this time. Now Foles off the play fake to Fournette. Into the hands of his tight end, Jeff Swain. And hit behind the line. He lost the football. It's loose. And the Texans scoop it. He's at the 40. The 20. 10. And they will bring this one back. A fumble return for the Texans touchdown. How about that for a momentum swing? You had it goal to go. Not only do you cough it up, but they pick it up and return it all the way for a touchdown. And now you have to give oxygen to the entire team because what a letdown that was. Terrific drive. Looked like you're going to get points. Instead, the other team registers them on the scoreboard. Extra point by Fairbairn. Up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. So here's the kickoff now as they'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. Fielded about a yard deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. I want to get your big picture thoughts on the Jaguars as their offense comes back out here. Because after that Week 8 win against the Jets, they're now 4-4. Four four. They've won two in a row. We talked about Gardner Minshew's play. They're going to London to face who they play, the Texans, yes. in Week 9. What do you think of this crew going forward? They've got a chance. They've got a good chance. And I know they've got to chase down the Colts, but they get two games against the Colts later on this year. But now they've won two straight games, both of them since Jalen Ramsey got traded to the Rams. Now, understand this. The team like Jalen Ramsey. Within the locker room, no problem with him. But it's people like you and me, the media, asking them about what's going on with Jalen, what's happening. That's gone now. They just get to play. So I think this team will continue to elevate, and they will be a force down the stretch. Look out. In the AFC South, they will contend. Them playing in London, by the way, seventh straight year they played over there. So oh, they love to play there. They do. They love the ownership, has already told the NFL, if there's a London game, they want to be involved. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense and reading your keys. You always hear about that and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? And it sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. The Jags with the football to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a first and ten. Into the hands of Lee on the jet sweep. And he goes across midfield and down into Houston territory. Benardrick McKinney, a first-time Pro Bowler a season ago, in on the tackle there. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Yeah. 
Fournette running out of the gun. And they'll get this just to the 47. One yard gain. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Here's Foles. Completes it to Lee. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. A 14-yard first down pickup for the Jaguars. Foles now hitting on 80% of his passes in the early going. 8 of 10. It's first down. He'll look to throw. And he completes it to Westbrook. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. 19 yards there on the catch and run. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Foles going to come up now first and 10. And he's 4 for 4 now, throwing the ball to start the drive. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Keelan Cole, the intended target, but it'll be second down. Quarterbacking 101. Never force the ball into double coverage, especially not this close to the goal line. The windows are so tight, you just don't want to force it in there because it could be tipped up and picked off. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Second and 10. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off down near the five. They'll start out on the ground. It's Lamar Miller. And if there was a lane there, it closed up quickly. Does he stop for no gain? Second down. No luck whatsoever there on the draw. Yeah, they're supposed to use their aggressiveness against them. That was the hope. But maybe they had too big of a meal last night. A half step slow, and he ends up running right into the meat of the defense. Let's make these babies cry all the way back home, yo. On second down, here's Miller. And they'll hit him for a loss as he's back to his two-yard line. She chalked that up as a four-yard loss. And now it's third down. All right, let's go ahead and detail this situation here. Third and long coming up. Back near your own goal line. I would be very hesitant about throwing the football in this situation. Maybe just run, run up the middle. Yeah, I think that that might be the spot for them. you got to try and find some space for your punter because you don't want him backed up where he has to alter what he does. And he gets it up to the 10-yard line here. He's able to chew up eight yards on the carry there, but still fourth down upcoming. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid game. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. The Texans send the punter out as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And job one here, Charles, just keep possession of the football. Two drives, two turnovers to this point. You're exactly right, Doctor. Hippocratic go, oath, go, go. first do no Ready. harm. And right now, they're harming themselves on offense. I like that. No one is mistaking me for a doctor, though. But thank you, Dr. Davis. And he will not be able to get away as Foles is taken down. The Clemson product, DJ Reader, got in for the sack. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it. And he's going to go down again. Zach Cunningham rolling in to get the sack. You better talk to your boy. You better talk to your boy. I'm going to protect you. The well, Foles and the Jags now have to deal with a third and long after that sack. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. 
Now well, the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. DeAndre Carter is deep for the Texans. This is taken at the 18. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. Houston takes the field again here offensively. That week eight game that we discussed earlier, Charles, ultimately was a tough one for the Texans because of what happened on the defensive side. And that's the news of J.J. Watt done for the year with a torn pectoral muscle. What does that mean for this team going forward? I think it means the identity of this team has to shift a little bit because as well as Deshaun Watson has played and he's the quarterback and usually you're the face of the franchise, let's be frank about it. J.J. Watt's the face of the Houston franchise and they've been good on defense for a long time. So now this truly becomes Deshaun Watson's team during the absence of, of J.J. Watt and he's going to have to play to a huge level, which he's been doing throughout this year. Now they go to London. I think that helps where the team gets away, gets to band together. They'll play Jacksonville there. And that's the final London game of this season. Then they get an open week, and then they go to Baltimore. And that game will be huge. 40. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Now a first down throw, Watson, and Thomas has it. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. On first and ten, Watson dumps it complete to Miller. Now the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. I think the best offenses love to get the ball to their running backs in open space because they have the ability to make people miss. And they also have the ability to run over people. And if you do that throughout the game, after a while, they might just run through some of those tackles and go a long way. Well, we saw him shed a nice tackle on that play. He gets it to Thomas. And he'll get it down on the plate of the 37. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Trying to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. This from 54 yards away. All day, baby, all day. So we have reached halftime here. It's the visitors, the Texans, out in front. As it's time now to send you back stateside to Orlando, Florida, and check in with Jonathan Coachman and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! As they say here in London, all to play for as we are back underway in the second half. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half and they've had ability to see what you've done, they're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? 
you adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. A big-time ramble there by Foreman. And even 60 yards. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. Now it's Watson, a bootleg. He's got his tight end, it's Fells. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. To throw again on second down. Watson, he'll bet he's in. It's a Houston Texans touchdown. Still plenty of time left in the game, but now starting to pull away a little bit. Get some breathing room with that one. And I don't want people to think that NFL locker rooms are cookie cutter, that everyone's saying the exact same thing in every situation. But I do know that all 32 teams have an emphasis on starting fast. Game, being on the second half, no matter what, with his first five minutes, first three, whatever, this was a big score to start the second half. Fairbairn good with the extra point, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here comes the Jags offense now. Time for their first possession of half number two. And their halftime hole now even deeper. And they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger. But no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing. And try and get back to where you were to start the half. Give them three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Defenses always talk about earning the right to rush the passer on third down. And you know what offenses want? Win first down so they can set things up for themselves better. And that wasn't helpful there. Not a big impact on first down. On second and seven, Foles throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for James O'Shaughnessy as tight end, and it's third down. Well, this at least is the right idea. I think they've got to get the tight end more involved. He had just one target in the first half, incomplete. Now incomplete here with the first target of the second half. Yeah, should not stop them at all from going back to him, though. Find him. Find him. On third down, he'll drop the throw. Space to maneuver at the 40. This one complete to the tight end, O'Shaughnessy. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville and a first down. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught and you don't give up much run right after the catch. Okay, Foles now man. hitting on two-thirds of his passes, 10 for 15 so far, first and 10. All that, and it only nets him a yard. It's second down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. On second and nine, Foles. The open man is Westbrook. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 40. 
I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and 10. Now this one to his running back out of the backfield. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it indeed. Here come the flags. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they'll march off another 15 against your squad. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. After the penalty, it's Fournette. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. And now we'll get a timeout. Looks like we've got a Jaguar and some discomfort down there on the field. We'll check on his status when we get back. Second and 12, Foles toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Keelan Cole, the intended target, and that takes us from second to third down. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. The linebacker, Zach Cunningham, there defensively to make that play. They went with the dive look that time on defense, just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. So on fourth down, Jags kicker Josh Lambeau comes on. This a 43-yard attempt. And Lambeau will put this one through. And they will get themselves on the board here at 14-3. So a good drive there to begin quarter number three, but they're only able to shave three points off the lead. Well, something's better than nothing, all right? They didn't play particularly well in the first half, but they definitely need them to step on the accelerator now and play a whole lot better. Now after the main field goal, back out Lambeau to kick this one off. Fielded about a yard deep. He'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. And now out comes Houston. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Watson will bring up the Texans here first and 10 at their own 24. A run there on first down and a pretty good one of five yards, so make it second and five. Up from the secondary to make the tackle, Jalen Ramsey. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing, but with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. They'll run it again with Miller. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. From the gun, here's Watson. Over the middle. It's incomplete. 
before the game, they were running the route tree about as efficiently and effectively as we could have possibly imagined. But sometimes the passes just go awry. Yeah, let's face it. When you're running the route tree in pregame, you don't have defenders breathing down your neck. You don't have defensive backs making plays on the football. Hard to replicate the intensity of the game in pregame. Throwing again on second and ten. Watson. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. Deshaun Watson, so multidimensional, able to scramble for the first. Now this will probably be the last play of the quarter. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter and that'll do it for the end of the second quarter this is the nfl and it's on ea sports from the 50 it's watson and he's going to drop this off to his fullback so a loss of five and it'll be second down when you lose that kind of yardage on a pass play, you often expect it to be a sack, but that wasn't the case there. They completed the pass. Probably would have been better off just dropping the football and making an incompletion as opposed to catching it and losing that kind of yardage. So they had the big loss on that first down pass play and facing a second and long. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back, and he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. They'll wind up getting 10 back there as it'll leave them with a third and five. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Here's Watson. He may try and run for this. He opted to go with a scramble, gets two yards, and now it's fourth. He'd had some success as a runner previously on this drive, just not as much space there that time. Yeah, this time when he pulled it down, they were ready for him, so I think he's going to have to fling a few in order to open up that running lane again. Bill O'Brien, an offensive mind, and he's going to trust his offense here. They're going for it on fourth. Now Watson. And that is incomplete. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And the Jaguars are going to take possession here on the turnover on downs. And I am not sure, partner, there, what the mindset was to go for it. I don't know. And some teams just feel that possession is the key to everything. They just want to have the football in their hands. No matter how it goes to the other team, they just don't trust doing that. So they say, listen, go for it and try and finish it ourselves. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. This one complete over the middle to O'Shaughnessy. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the Let's penalty go. you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. And now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Now Foles. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. Foles. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. Go, go, the go. Jaguars on third down. They've been very good. Five for seven thus far. This is third and ten. Back to throw here. And that will be incomplete. Whenever I see an in route dropped, as we just saw on that play, I'm always thinking that in the back of their mind, they're worried about what's coming at them because they're going towards traffic on that route as opposed to being away from it and maybe having a little bit more space. And this 
pass is off the left upright. And it comes back. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. So distance not the issue there. He had plenty of leg to get it there. It's that darn upright getting in the way. Always gets in the way of a good time, doesn't it? Because he hit it square, too. Sometimes you can bank one in if you get it on the end of the football. No such luck there for him. Good starting field position for him as they come up first and 10 at the 45. They begin with a run by Miller. And he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. Brandon, you know how many times we've done games, and at the start of the fourth quarter, we see both teams hold up the four fingers, fourth quarter is ours. Well, how about this drive? You saw the four fingers for four-minute offense, and this offensive line has really hunkered down and established themselves. Now, this is where they say, put the game on our shoulders, we'll lead the way, right? No doubt about it. And let me tell you, if you're a running back, all you want to do is get behind those big fellas, have a little vision, and find some space. And a solid way to do that on the first play of the drive there. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Rolling to his right. He can run for it, and he will. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. That is an absolute backbreaker. That was a design passing play, wasn't a draw. You think you got him stopped, good coverage downfield, and he's able to pick up the first with his legs. Defensively, that kicks into your psyche and hurts a little bit, doesn't it? It certainly does, and, and here's the thing. Anytime you give up a first down, it hurts you psychologically, but it hurts more when they get it this way because you've covered everything. He didn't have any place to throw the football. He takes off running and picks it up anyway. And now you have to stay on the field for an extra set of downs. And really could have used that stop trailing here in the fourth. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open and it would have been an easy throw. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Throwing again is Watson. And this will be incomplete. A.J. Bouye, the fine quarterback, there to make the play defensively. This defense could use some more of these types of plays. How about him reading it, driving on the football, and he's right there for the pass breakup. The Texans on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and ten. Out of the gun, Watson. And intercepted, maybe the turning point they need. Picked up by the linebacker, Miles Jack. And he's going to get this one to the 23-yard line. Here's Foles. He's got his tight end, O'Shaughnessy. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Here we go, D. Here I come again. Here I come again. Here I come again. Watch safety creep. Watch safety creeping. Safety's creeping. They go draw here. Blue. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. A gain of 13. It's a first down. We'll definitely see some open running lanes, and he's taking advantage of it right now, but that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. He's going to let it fly. It's caught inside the 25. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. Give him 32 on the play. That's a great job of working the sideline right there. I love how he tracked the football the whole way. Just reached up and pulled it in. Had excellent field presence to understand where he was in order to make that play happen. On first down, he'll drop to throw. And his throw is incomplete. 
I think he's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. You better be afraid of me. You better be afraid of me. Second and 10. He hits blue. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end. But running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Be alert, the last be catch did get three, but they're still left needing seven yards on third down. Back to throw. Incomplete. He had his hands on it, but couldn't pick it. But it's now fourth down. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. The kick by Lambeau is good. And a second field goal here cuts their deficit to 14-6 to now. So you knew one way or another that they needed the two scores. They get the easy one out of the way. Now they'll get the ball back, hopefully. Yeah, and the question is, how do you accomplish that? Do you onside kick it? Or since you have all three timeouts, do you kick it deep? To me, I'm playing field position. With all three timeouts, I kick it deep and try and pin them back there. So the field goal got him back within one score, and now the focus lies on this onside kick. And the effort snuffed out. The Texans' hands team recovers. A tough one there. They certainly wanted that when they needed it, but they didn't absolutely have to get it. They still do have three timeouts. You're exactly right. They had to attempt it, but even though they didn't get it, as you noted, with three timeouts, if they can get these stops on defense, all hope is not lost. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Out comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And checking the timeouts, they do have two defensively, but no real need to use them as they're not going to be able to stop the clock after that. So following the sack, they'll try to change their fortune here on second and 13. Watson hands this to Foreman. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as it comes with a minute four left to go in the game. If they want a first, they need to get the football to the 32 here on third down. They keep it on the ground. This time, it's Miller. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. The Texans send the punter out as he'll kick it away for the second time. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. Foles and the Jags down 14-6, to 6, 56 seconds to go. They need a touchdown and, of course, the two-point conversion as well. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Wait. They'll look to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. Keelan Cole, the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. 
Work with me, partner. Take a deep breath, because that's what they're doing down the field now. That incompletion allowed them to exhale a little bit. Get in the huddle, kind of scam the crowd, go, see if any go. celebrities are here. Relax a little bit as they start this big drive. Back to throw. Goes underneath to O'Shaughnessy. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. No timeout. You got to go quick here. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. He'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. What kind of? Hey, 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 we got three down, three down. Back to throw. And finding Keelan Cole. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Ten yards there, good enough for a Jags first down. Four seconds, three seconds. One final shot, they'll look to throw. This one complete to the tight end, O'Shaughnessy. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still... You were wondering, could it happen, possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. With that, we say cheerio from London.